Quaker Oats is changing the name of its Aunt Jemima brand pancakes and syrup. After 131 years, the Aunt Jemima name and image will be removed from all of the syrup and pancake packaging. The brand will get a new name and image. Parent company Quaker Oats has acknowledged the brand's origins were based on a racial stereotype. Lando Lakes Butter removed the Native American woman appearing on its packaging since the late 1920s. The Lakes and Woods landscape remains on the Minnesota Cooperative's packaging, but the woman, known as Mia, has been replaced by photos of Lando Lakes member farmers. President and CEO Beth Ford says as the company looks to its 100th anniversary, it wants packaging that reflects the foundation and heart of its culture, which are its farmers. The company did not address the removal of the Native American woman. The logo has been criticized as racist and stereotypical. Hours after the Aunt Jemima brand announced a rebranding, Texas-based Uncle Ben's is following suit. The parent company, Mars Food North America, says on its website, in part, quote, We know we have a responsibility to take a stand in helping to put an end to racial bias and injustices. As we listen to the voices of consumers, especially in the black community, and to the voices of our associates worldwide, we recognize that now is the right time to evolve the Uncle Ben's brand, including its visual brand identity, adding... Racism has no place in society. We stand in solidarity with the black community, our associates, and our partners in the fight for social justice. The company provided no timeline for its rebranding. Katie Johnston for WJZ.com. I shall alone when it began his lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Simehawashah, Waha Rakak Kwadash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sensitive brethren out there that's also laboring in this work. And as always, I want to say shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Aqua, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, what you're witnessing right now, <laughs> you know, in the form of this whole swarm of activity that's taking place here on the planet Earth, you know, rather it's the whole debate concerning these different statues and monuments being taken down or of late, you know, you have conversation where the Star Spangled Banner and the National Anthem is actually in question, you know, for having racial overtones or even in the sporting world, you know, you have these Confederate flags being barred from different sporting events and in particular NASCAR and what you just witnessed in the opening clip which featured different brands, you know, such as Auntie Mama and Uncle Ben's, you know, Land of Lakes, which by the way, these different products have become somewhat of a fixture here in America. And they're now being removed, see? And this is nothing more than a transition of power, what you're witnessing here. Okay, nothing more than a changing of the guard. Yahweh Bashmi Shah is pretty much washing away the fingerprints of the so-called white man and any form of evidence of him being in power, you know, to make room for a new regime, which is going to come in the form of the kingdom of heaven. The best way I could simplify it is, you know, if you have someone who occupy a certain office space, you know, well, if that person is about to be replaced, well, he's going to begin to, to move all of his items, you know, different portraits and, and pictures of his family on his desk. He's going to take them down and it's going to be all an effort to make room for the next person to come in and occupy that space. So it's the same in the spirit. All right. Which the motivation behind everything that you're witnessing is racism, man. <laughs> See, which proves that what we teach is on par with the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It's in harmony with the scriptures because the main rebuttal, if you will, that we receive mainly from our own people is this idea of the Lord loving everybody, man. You know, in this book, the Holy Bible is pretty much the banner to bring everybody together. Well, that's a demonic doctrine. That's a demonic idea, which goes back to, to the Tower of Babel, man. You know, when you read the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, where you had the nations to come together to build one tower, which the Lord came down and confounded them, proving that he's not with that spirit of unity, which is nothing more than the new world order. This is what the new world order consists of, man. The diabolical plots and schemes and strategies of the elites, okay? They pretty much want to bring everybody together under one world or a one world government, you know, a one world banner, one idea, one philosophy, you know, 
one belief system, you know, one monetary system, which is going to be in the form of the RFID chip in the mark of the beast. See that? So the Lord has never been with that. Matter of fact, let me let me start off with something real quick to support that before we get into this lesson. This is the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter in the A verse. It says, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, see, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. See that? Let's read this again. When the Most High divided, <laughs> see, to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. So two words jump out right there, man. Divide and separate. There's a reason why these different nations have certain customs, you know, certain delicacies, man. Certain forms of entertainment, certain dances and certain music, you know. These different nations are worlds apart. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me grab that real quick. What's that? The book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter and the 17th verse. It says, but Israel, see, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Yeah, and this proves that this idea of salvation is not open to the nations. It's only reserved for the nation of Israel, and in particular, the elect of the nation of Israel. See, again, it says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. See, world without end. Proving that Israel is a world in itself. Okay, and these different nations are worlds apart. <laughs> All right? And this also proves when you read the book of St. John, the third chapter, in the 16th verse, <laughs> which is pretty much the go-to scripture for you so-called Christians, where it says, God so loved the world. Well, guess what? That world right there is concerning the world of Israel. See, let's read this again. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. See, world without end. You know? So again, these different nations are worlds apart. Man, if you was to stumble up in a damn saloon, all right, and Edomites in there doing a damn square dance, you're not going to vibe with that. See, because that's another world, all right? And again, the overtone of this book itself is racist, man. It's no coincidence, you know, for an example, you know, this whole Aunt Your Mama thing, which, by the way, is a brand that's been around for over 130 years. Now, all of a sudden, it's being associated with racism. Not to say it hasn't, all right, in times before, you know, people might have mentioned it, but it was never made as public and made such a fuss about or made an issue of until now. How convenient all of a sudden Jake is beginning to wake up to the fact that something is off about that statue, man, or something is racist about this brand, you know, or this image that they, they packaging and selling to me. Where's the reason behind that? Because this doctrine that we push forth is now beginning to accomplish what it was set out to do. All right. And that's to bring everything back into its proper order. And that order consists of us not coexisting with our enemies, man. OK, what have we got out of uh, coexisting with the so-called white man? Well, I'll tell you, being hung and lynched and castrated, man. All right. So we're in a time now where Yahweh Bashim Havashah is moving the so-called white man in this current system out of the way to make room for the kingdom of heaven, which brings me to the book of Daniel, the second chapter, in the 44th verse. It says, And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom. Let's read this again. And in the days of these kings, and these kings right here is concerning the powers that be, you know, in the form of NATO, the EU, all right, the European Union, okay, the beast system which consists of a conglomerate of different nations. You know, that's why the scriptures say they will be given one hour to rule with the beast, you know? And this is what makes this current system diverse than any other kingdom, all right? In the ancient world, you would have a king, and once, you know, he died or was put to death or whatever, then his son would be the successor to the throne, all right? But when you consider the so-called white man, his... Uh, way of, of establishing his power in the structure, if you will, of his system is diverse from that method. 
you know, you have Congress and a Senate. You actually vote in different presidents. And in particular, this B system, you have those who deal behind the shrouds of secrecy, man. You know, who pretty much pull the strings, you know, in the shadows, okay? Which will be the Illuminati, if you will. Okay, these elite banking families, man. The chief house of the nation of Edom. This will be those kings. Again, it says, and in the days of these kings, which is now, shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom. See, right now, the kingdom is being set up. See that? Matter of fact, let's click on the definition for set up right here. All right. In the Hebrew word, that would be quam, quam, right? And it says to arise, stand. Yeah, which is a fulfillment of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter in the Valley of the Dry Bones. You know, through this word, we have arisen and stood upon our feet. And there's also spoken of in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. See, it says to arise, stand, to arise from, to come on the scene. <laughs> See, to come on the scene. Yeah, that's heavy right there. And that's what you're witnessing. You have witnessed the kingdom come on the scene. All right. Which we represent the kingdom. Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick. And we'll come back to these definitions. This is the book of Luke, the 17th chapter and the 20th verse. It says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, see, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. See, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. So we represent the kingdom. This knowledge, this understanding that we possess this actually uh, solidify us as being the kingdom, man. See that? We hold a decree of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh which is going to usher in this kingdom. We are declaring that there is a kingdom to come, you know? And this current system will be moved out of the way. See that? So when you go back to the definition for set up, because again, the scriptures say in the days of these kings, the Lord shall set up a kingdom all right again it says to come on the scene what you're witnessing right now in the form of these various camps throughout the landscape of america you know babylon the great near and far for that matter throughout the world all right is nothing more than a representation of the kingdom these different camps <laughs> you know is a testament that the kingdom has come on the scene see it says to arise to stand to endure to set up Establish, see, to set up, establish. Right now, the Lord is establishing the kingdom of heaven. And in no wise could two kingdoms coexist with one another. So that's why simultaneously, as you see the nation of Israel being exalted, starting with the elect, the so-called white man and his current system is being taken out of the way. So this is no light thing, the fact that the so-called white man and these different uh, fixtures in America in the form of these memorials and statues and even something as subtle as uncle ben's you know being taken down because it represent a time where the so-called white man had a stronghold on us but guess what that's a form of the kingdom being established if you're viewing this thing through spiritual lenses man okay the lord is now raising up and setting up the kingdom of heaven see so when you go back here to the book of daniel again the book of daniel the second chapter and the 44th verse, it says, And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom. So again, that's what you're witnessing, man. The Lord is raising up the kingdom of heaven, you know? And you got to understand, this is a process. The heavenly father is known as the husbandman, right? And what you're witnessing is husbandry. Now, when you plant a seed, there's a process, man, for that seed to grow. You don't plant a seed and it just burst out of the ground, a great mulberry tree, man. There's a process. And that's the same when considering kingdoms, you know, the rise and fall of kingdoms. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me grab something real quick and we're going to go back. This is the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, and starting at the ninth verse. It says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, 
I have put my words in thy mouth, proving that what we speak is sanctioned by Yahweh, by Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. The Lord has decreed a certain time for this current system, this reign of terror perpetuated by the so-called white man to be moved out of the way. See, and simultaneously, the Lord has decreed the rise of, of the kingdom of heaven. See, verse 10, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, see, to root out. That's what you do with a plant. And that's what's happening with the so-called white man in his current system. It's being rooted up, see, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. See that? So simultaneously, as this place is being rooted up, you know, and, and pulled down, right? Where the Lord is actually building and planting the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> See that? Which again, this will be a process. So what you're witnessing is the setting up of the kingdom. See that? Matter of fact, let me grab one more quick one before we go back. That's the book of Ezekiel. The 17th chapter in the 24th verse, it says, And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree, see, which is dealing with the so-called white man, Esau, and his current system, have exalted the low tree. So you see what simultaneously, as the Lord is bringing down this current system, he's exalting the children of Israel against on with the elect. All right? But the point is, the Lord is comparing these two kingdoms to trees, which is a process. When you plant a seed, there's a process for that seed to grow into that tree. See that? Again, the out of Lord have brought down the high tree, have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree, and have made the dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. Yeah, so the Lord is taking responsibility for what you're witnessing, man. So the Lord is exalting the children of Israel and setting up this kingdom. See? So when you go back here to the book of Daniel, again in the second chapter, in the 44th verse, it says, And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Yeah, and that's the difference with this kingdom that's being set up. It's going to be a perpetual kingdom. Why? Because we're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, which is the very opposite of what the so-called white man did. And this is why his kingdom, this is what's contributing to the fall of his kingdom. See, matter of fact, let's grab that. This is the book of Isaiah, the 24th chapter. In the fifth verse, it says, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws. See, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. See that? So by these devils changing, you know, the, the ordinance, and because they are uh, transgressing the laws of Yahweh, then they're going to be moved out of the way. Not to mention all the wickedness and bloodshed that he left in his wake in his pursuit of power. You know, matter of fact, let me grab that real quick. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter. In the 8th verse. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. See? And that one people would be the so-called white man. And that power is being translated to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right? Which would be the Israelites, and in particular, the elect of the nation of Israel. See? So again, back in Daniel, the second chapter, in the 44th verse, and in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Yeah, we're not going to have to ever look over our shoulder again. Why? Because we're going to be in harmony with the will of Yahweh. We're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay? It says, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Yeah, meaning we're going to rule. It's going to be a rigorous rule in the kingdom. And that's pursuant to the book of Revelation, the second chapter, the 26 and 27 verse, where the Lord said we're going to rule over the nations with a rod of iron, man. So pretty much it's going to be a dictatorship, if you will, in the kingdom. We're going to force the laws of Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shah on your people, man. We're going to enforce it by way of that rod of iron. And again, what you're witnessing right now is the beginning stages of that. <laughs> okay, the mere fact that 
everything that so-called white man has uh, set up, you know, as a memorial and a reminder of him ruling over us is being moved out of the way. See, which brings me to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. And starting at the second verse, it says, for we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. Yeah, and this, when read in its entirety, Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, and mainly and most importantly, when read with understanding, you will know that this is the so-called white man reasoning with himself, you know, and in particular, the chief house of the nation of Edom, which comes in the form of these international bankers. Again, it says, for we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. See, for the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes yet, which is symbolic to the destruction. And our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. See? And our name shall be forgotten in time. Yeah, in the kingdom, you're not going to remember the works of the so-called white man. See? It says, and no man shall have our works in remembrance. <laughs> See that? And we are in the beginning stages of that process, man. Remember, this is a process. You know, the mere fact that this man is taking down statues, memorials, which that word memorial goes into memory, man. See? Matter of fact, you know what? Let me let me grab some real quick. And we're going to go back. It's the book of Proverbs, the 10th chapter and the 7th verse. It says, the memory of the just is blessed. See? But the name of the wicked shall rot. See? But the name of the wicked shall rot. Now, when you consider anything that rots is a process. In fact, when you look up that word, it actually says the process of deteriorating. You know, so this is a process and we're in the beginning stages of this man and his uh, decline. You know, again, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. See that? So when you go back here to Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, and again in the fourth verse, it says, and our name shall be forgotten in time. <laughs> See, and no man shall have our works in remembrance. Again, what's what's some of these works, man? These statues. You know, I got them Uncle Ben's rice, man. That's actually a work of the so-called white man. These different TV shows, all right, uh, these sporting events in the form of soccer, or the NFL, the NBA. Those works are going to be forgotten, man. And again, we're in the beginning stages of that. This is a process, man. See? The pastime of America is being compromised. The works of the so-called white man is, is vanishing away. See? It says, And no man shall have our works in remembrance, and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof, which is symbolic to how this man is going to be taken out of the way ultimately. It's going to be a violent overthrow, you know, in the form of World War III. When those ICBM missiles are shot back and forth throughout the planet Earth, mainly here on the soils of America. See that? But again, the point is what you're witnessing right now is a changing of the guard, you know, and the transition of power. All right. And the so-called white man and his works is being moved out of the way to make room to usher in the kingdom of heaven. So, yeah, I just want to touch on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.